Who's on this one? Sonny, is that you? Yes, sir. Ed Moby, have you seen the file? I mean, there's some weirdness on this indictment. She was, well, apparently you were arrested August of 2021. Yes, sir. Yeah. And you I weren't, weren't indicted until September of 23? Yeah. What's our, what in the world happened there? Uh, there. Uh, that's what's in mind. Yeah, what's the, what's the, um, let's see. Yeah. What was, what slow boat to China did that one go on? <laughs> I blame it on COVID and <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Laird. Good point. Uh, <laughs> Okay, we're all right. we're all less smarter now. Thank you. That was a good one. Yep. That helped nothing. That helped nothing. That helped. We, I think the, uh, we moved back in time to the dark ages just then after that. What Judge, is it, it a drug test that took forever? Yes, labs. Two years for a lab test? If they have to go to Austin, it will take at least... At least a year, most of the time. Two years. God, that's terrible. <laughs> well, um, we have a complaint box for our, our um, intake Thank department. Thank you very if you much. Would like to know, yeah, give me a bunch of, of those complaints so I can fill them out. But, I mean, that is weird. Yeah. For the record, this matter is before the court for the purpose of reviewing as far as time. Okay, I got a bunch of uh, good stuff, I think. I haven't seen it. I have to give a big thanks to people in court who sent me some good stuff. Uh, Marion sent me one, uh, which is depressing, it appears, but very interesting. Where, where else I get that? Mortimer Duke was, uh, was responsible for that, uh, for that intro. And... Whoever I'm forgetting, I will remember as I go. In addition, uh, to address the plaintiff's objection to a child support recommendation. This hearing is being conducted via Zoom of President Attorney Christine Hills, representing the plaintiff father, Robert Moss. Mr. Moss is present. In addition, defendant to mother Tiffany B. Dell is also present. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Your Honor. The parties have conferred this morning with Mr. Walker for the front of the court. Yes, Your Honor, I'm in the process of trying to get that recommendation to you right now. Just bear with the court for a moment. Court would also note for the record that the last time the parties were before the court, February 13th, the court did refer the issue of custom parent time to the front of the court for formal investigation recommendation. Uh, the front of the court, Catherine Scott, has recommended that the parties continue joint legal physical to defend mother. I don't know what's going on here. What has now received the recommendation of uh, Mr. Walker this morning, which is as follows. But I think Plenty it's time Exciting and new. By this court, while this printing time shall be supervised by Family Counseling Shelter Services, each party shall pay for their own intake, mother shall pay for all sessions. The defendant's objection to the child support recommendation scheduled with referee. The key end for April 16th, 2024, 9 a.m. be vacated. Further, with respect to child support, Ms. Walker is recommending that commencing January 1st, 2024, that the complaint to father pay child support in the amount of $1,452 per month. Your Honor, there is one. I'm sorry. There's, there's, a section, there's a section that I forgot to put in. I, I apologize. 
there's a section that I forgot to put into my recommendation. Um, Mr. Moss is stating that he may have given direct payments to uh, to the other party for child support. And I was going to add there that if he can provide proof that there were payments directly paid to her for my, for January, February, and March, that the friend of the court would give credit for that. So I need to add that to my recommendation. I apologize for that. Okay, thank you, Mr. Walker. Uh, so the recommended uninsured medical expenses be shared as follows. Plaintiff uh, father paying 65%, mother paying 35%. That is the recommendation. Of course, where we have a what, 18 month old minor child here. Ms. Sills, uh, with the addition of the language that's suggested by Mr. Walker, that Mr. Walsh received credit for any direct payments made to Ms. Goodell upon providing proof. Your client uh, agree with this recommendation? Yes, Your Honor. It's my understanding with respect to the um, parenting time recommendation that um, the current order regarding parenting time would continue only until the family counseling and shelter services services is able to accommodate a visit. I know that they have a, a wait list uh, of several weeks, at least at the moment. Um, so I'm not sure if Mr. Walker's intent was that the supervised visits with mother continue once family counseling is involved or that those stop once family counseling is involved. Honor, the intent was that once family counseling and shelter services begin supervised visitation, mother would no longer have to supervise. Okay, thank you. And I, I may have just misheard um, the reading of the recommendation. So thank you for that clarification. Um, with that, um, Judge, we are not objecting to Mr. Walker's recommendation today. Okay. So, so if the court understands it correctly, Ms. Sills, at the current printing time for dad, which is uh, supervised at by mother okay. at Chuck E. Cheese's on Saturday, Sundays, noon to four, Wednesdays, five, seven, Fridays, four, six, that would continue until such time as the supervised printing time will commence at family culture, counseling and shelter services. And uh, at which point in time, uh, all supervised printing time would be at that agency. Yes, and I would suggest and hope that the parties contact the agency as soon as possible to get on the wait list so that there's not any delay. Yes. Um, can you provide the parties with the phone number? Um, I will. Okay, so Ms. Budali, you both you need to contact the agency as soon as possible to schedule your intakes. And that's the first step to getting on this wait list. All right, so. Thank you, Ms. Hills. And Ms. Budell, do you understand the recommendation this morning? Yes, I understand. Okay, do you have any objection to court adopting this recommendation? Yes, I do. Okay, what's your objection? My objection is I don't want it if I have to pay for it. I'd rather supervise the visits myself, even though it's... I don't want to take the money away from my other five children. Like I have five children. I don't. He has just Shiloh. Like I don't want to pay for his supervised visits because he's lying. You know what I mean? I don't want no, to. What do you mean he's lying? What was that to the parenting? Time? Because that's what that's what happened, Your Honor. We we both filled out the investigation and all of. Well, he didn't even fill Mr. out. Yeah, why don't you sit down, please? You're, you're walking sorry, around the room. Sorry, I'm sorry. Can you sit down, please? Yes. So. Okay, till now I was wondering what people in the court was thinking, but I see that I see this is warming up. We both filled out the paperwork and then um then we got the order for child support and I objected to it because it wasn't accurate. I make five thousand and it said he makes six thousand a month. Well that's not accurate at all. So I objected to it. Then two days later, they object to it saying that that he makes even less than that. And I'm just like, I I don't feel like it's right that I have to keep being so nice and supervising the visits and, you know, all this stuff. And he's just going to keep lying and trying to cheat Shiloh. So that's what I said. I said testimony from Mr. Moss this morning. So what is he lying about his income? Yes, Your Honor. If they're saying I make five thousand a month, how does he make six thousand a month if he has all these houses and all these bills? And we have to use our common sense not just the little bit that he provides of information he provides. So I objected to that. So when I objected, then they turned around and objected, which didn't even make sense because you know what I mean? If you look at his assets, I turned in some of them as proof to friend of the court. 
I turned in a lot of um, evidence, I feel like. Um, and then he objected to it, but I'm already coming out of money doing all these supervised visits for him. And he's going to still try to cheat Shiloh. So that's why I said, I don't want to keep supervising the visits if he's going to keep trying to cheat my daughter. And then he said, he don't want to pay for daycare so that I can work. He wants to be the babysitter. Well, I can't depend on him because he's evicted me and my kids before. So clearly he don't care if we have a roof over our head. So me and my kids can't depend on someone like that to provide child care for the family. This just didn't go good today at all, Your Honor, at all. Well, uh, you actually have a lot of anger in, inside you, Miss Vidal, and I understand um, your frustration. But again, yeah, you got two different issues. Honest. One is, hold on, one is parenting time, one is child support. You object to everything, correct? <clears throat> the, the, the initial friend of the court recommendation that I saw. Any objection? All objections. I didn't object to that. But then when he said, when Mr. Walker said that if I want supervised visits through the court, I would have to pay for it. Well, now I'm taking money away from the other five kids. I can't do that. So I'll just continue to be humiliated and supervise the visits if we could do that. But I want I want it, his income looked into because that's not accurate, Your Honor. And I'm not coming to this court let's lying about one issue anything. At a time. Let's, let's deal with one issue at a time, ma'am. There are two different issues. Ms. Sills, if she doesn't want to pay for the uh, the visits, I don't know. What, what, first of all, what are the costs for the the visits? Is it thirty dollars a session? Uh, Twenty five or thirty dollars a session, I, I believe. Okay. Um, and if she doesn't want to pay that, what about continuing the, the if, if mom wants to take time and and uh, supervise three days a week? Uh, does your client oppose to that? Mr. Moss, in light of what we spoke about um, with regard to family counseling and shelter services, uh, are you willing to either continue with uh, Ms. Budell supervising your visits long term, um, or at least as long term until the court orders at, at some point that your visitation should be uh, unsupervised? Um, or are you uh, willing to take on some responsibility for the payment at family counseling and shelter services of the $25 to $30 a session? Um, um, I, I, I definitely don't have no extra money at this time, so I, I guess we'll just have to do what we have to do. In terms of having her continue to supervise visits? Uh, yeah. And you've indicated that there's not this sort of um, vitriol during the visits as uh, in regard to you, that this is your daughter is insulated from this back and forth between the two of you that we've seen today? So far, but after today, uh, you know, just like she said, she's being humiliated. Um, and then all I see is this, this is about money. All this is, this is about yeah. money. Mm -hmm. yeah, okay. Ms. Hills, are you, and uh, for the consideration, there is some value to dad having time with the minor child without mom being present, a third party. I agree. So what the, the courts are trying to do is each party shall pay for their own intake and they should contact the as soon as possible. And the party shall share equally the, the cost of the, the sessions. We're going to review this, review this in perhaps six weeks. And then at some point in time, uh, hopefully we'll get positive reports from an independent third party. Maybe that we don't need to supervise for any time. That's the, the hope that the direction we need to move in is to limit the supervised for any time and I think it's appropriate to observe the relation between dad and minor child without mom being present so that we can make a determination whether or not dad is capable of uh, providing caring for this child without mom or some other supervisor being present. We establish the relationship between dad and the child so the court believes that would benefit the minor child by we're going to continue the supervised parenting time with mom supervising on Sundays, Wednesdays, and Fridays as pre order until such time as uh, Family counseling child services is available. I'm going to schedule supervised training time sessions at which time, hopefully, be every week, uh, whatever that agency can accommodate. And that'll be just dad and the minor child, Shiloh. And the party shall share equally the, uh, I'm sorry, shall, shall share equally the, uh, shall share the cost of those sessions. So, of course, going to modify uh, the recommendation in that regard. 
With respect to child support, um, Mr. Walker, can this be referred for formal investigation recommendation? Child support and parties are required to submit financial documentation to verify income. Ms. Vidal is disputing the uh, reported income of Mr. Moss. Now, we I can do that. Method of a recommendation. And I know it's an object to recommendation. It's not in the court file. I have no idea who did the recommendation, what kind of information they used. Your Honor, the, there was a formal recommendation done. My client provided a tremendous amount of income uh, information. And I'm looking to see who did the recommendation. Stephanie LaPrade did the recommendation. I did the recommendation, Your Honor. Okay, so there have been a, a signed a statement signed by the parties in terms of verifying their income, correct? Correct. Right. So, uh, Ms. Vidal, you can go to the front court and get a copy of the, of the information that Mr. Moss signed. And if you uh, find that he is uh, uh, misleading the front of the court, uh, that, that's basically come back and address this thing further. But this point, 100%. Of course, I'm... Oh, I'm sorry. I thought you asked me a question. But at this point in time, of course, inclined to adopt the recommendation that they can uh, provide other allegations that his income is not accurate. He's provided written documentation in the front of the court. And that's the front of the court has, has adopted, has made this recommendation based upon the review of the written information provided. Presumably that included, did that include the last year's tax returns? Ms. O? That is my understanding, yes. Okay. Your Honor, the What's... last three tax returns were included in the packet that was turned in. All right, thank you. So the front so the, court has uh, all the financial information necessary to make this recommendation, Ms. Budell. So he lied to the IRS and now we have to just accept that? Is that what we're saying? Is that what's going on? Because no, Mr. Mo ask Mr. Moss how much he pays in mortgage payments a month. If you believe he's committing fraud, you can uh, contact his agencies and, and allege that. I just want yeah. Shiloh to- Yes, ma'am, he can lie to the IRS with impunity. It's totally cool. This court's down with it. Just deal with it. Be properly provided for. If he's paying ten thousand dollars in mortgage payments right now, and he used to pay twenty, he can't only make six thousand dollars a month if just his mortgages cost ten. Uh, I I don't know how to put this to you. Uh, income can vary. I don't know if this guy's lying or not. He might be. He might not be. I don't know. But but her logic sucks. Hey, That's I, where I my anger and frustration is coming from. In front of me. Ms. Bidell, the court suggests is uh, contact legal services or attorney and they can petition the court and show that Mr. Moss is understating his, his income is ability to pay. I don't Why do I have to have an attorney to do that? Tax returns. That's what I want to do, Your Honor. Okay. All right. You have the right to do that. You can still, you can still petition the court to uh, to challenge us, but you need to have some, have some proof that there's been fraud on the part of Mr. Moss in terms of his financial situation. I. I guess I'm not understanding what I'm doing wrong then. <laughs> yeah, clearly. Is that a documentation that he's committing fraud? It's a proof rather than just allegations. You see, in court, we just don't take your word for it. That, that, that's not how it works. I mean, it kind of, it kind of does for women in family law, but, but it shouldn't. Where's... Like just Big Emmett, he sold for four hundred and twenty thousand dollars, and he owned it outright. So I'm not under like he's just get, he's getting ready to sell Breast Road. He's going to clear three hundred thousand on it. I mean, I'm not understanding. He sold West Road, made a hundred something on that last year too. Like it's big money. So I'm not understanding how he only makes one thousand more a month than I do. I'm not. Okay. I'm not understanding. You see, disclosed. Presuming that's all been disclosed in his tax returns, he could have had significant debt in those properties too. I don't know if they're. But that wouldn't be. But that's not accurate. Dollars. That's not accurate. Okay. Well, you can you can conduct discovery, Mr. Bedell. You can submit to interrogatories, request for production of documents to Mr. Moss, and then get a copy of those things. Yeah, I want Your Honor. I want to. I'm sorry. I'm not familiar with. I want to bring in my evidence, okay. and I want to present my evidence i don't under, understand like this remote stuff i want to like dress up and come to court and present my case <laughs> you can well, you present that to the front of the court i mean the front of the court is also uh, has already conducted the judge she wants to dress up 
investigation. That's when you should have provided all that information. So that's what I did. And then, and then I told, then I objected to that when we, when they did the discovery, because it wasn't accurate. So I, sorry, sorry, I'm starting to pace. Let me sit down. So I, um, so I objected to that. And then I want to come into court and present my evidence. Okay. Well, we'll leave on here then. You can appear for referee McKee on April 16th at 9 a.m. We'll keep that on. You can come in yes. with, McKee with all your documentation. So, Mr. Yes. Uh, Walker, we'll leave that hearing on from Mr. McKee. The court's inclined to adopt the recommendation this morning. If uh, Mr. McKee, uh, you can address it further on April 16th at 9 a.m. So, we'll leave that date on, Ms. Goodell. You can come in person, talk to Mr. McKee, and provide him the documentation and show him uh, proof that uh, Mr. Moss is submitting fraudulent tax returns. Indeed. They make a complaint with the IRS. Your Honor, I am not available on the 16th. That's a travel day uh, for me. So uh, I couldn't even, I can't even promise I could stop somewhere uh, and join in a hearing. Um, okay, so I'm wondering if we could uh, get a new date uh, before Mr. McKee from front of the court. I'm, I'm certain my client is going to wish me to be there. Okay. Uh, Mr. Walker, do you have access to Mr. McKee's schedule? If we to take a break, you can call him and uh, get a, we can yeah. change his May 16th to a different date. Your Honor, we can put that on April 30th at 1 p.m. We'd be available then, Ms. Sills? I can make that. Judge, I've got a 1.30 with you um, that day. So as long as you're okay with that, I'm okay with that. Absolutely. Okay. Okay. So Your Honor, I can add that to my recommendation. Uh, Stephanie, can you give me the date one more time? April 30th, 1 p.m. with referee McKee. Thank you, Mr. Brad. Your Honor, the only other thing is um, because they're both self-employed, Mr. Moss provided the last three years, Ms. Budell did not. So we would also need the last three, the three years for her as well, if we're going to be making accurate recommendations to the court. I don't have 21s. I don't have 21s. I gave everything. I didn't file in 21. Hmm. I gave everything. Did file in 2021? No. <laughs> what, yeah, like, that, no income? That won't work. No, because I, well, I didn't realize until I just had to submit my paperwork, but it's probably because my company changed names mid-year. So I probably just didn't, I probably missed it because I probably got one from Landmark Realty and then one from Compass Realty and just, I don't know, maybe I got confused or something, but I just realized oh, that when I had to turn, okay. I, I don't turn in my income for anything else. But he's committing fraud, don't you know? <laughs> She's like, I, 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 yeah, I'm not going to turn over my, my stuff. No, 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 no. But he, he, he needs to do his. So I didn't realize it. There should be a social security statement available. Um, she should be able to set up an account online, which will give a history if there was withholding done, um, which will give a, a history of the- I'm uh, self-employed, so it, it doesn't, but I just have to find my 1099 from Landmark and then my 1099 from Compass because we just, my brokerage changed names halfway through the year in 2021. So I'm guessing that's what happened. Yeah, if you're self-employed, you're supposed to be filing quarterly returns. I guarantee that's not happening. I guarantee, well, I don't guarantee. I highly suspect that most of that income probably is never reported. But what what the attorney suggested is, is would be a, a reasonable idea unless you're sleazy. Well, each of those brokers should be able to provide you with the documentation of your income while they were your broker. So reach out to those brokers. And yep. uh, try to yeah. uh, secure the information, Miss Bedell, for this uh, hearing on April 30th at 1 30 p.m. You can uh, 1 p.m. April 30th, 1 p.m. We'll put this in this uh, order this morning that uh, your objection to the child's recommendation can be heard by Referee McKee, not on the 16th, but rather the April 30th at 1 p.m. Okay. And you need to get that documentation together. Uh, Miss Hill suggested to go online with Social Security. They can have that information. Obviously, if you had taxes. And do you have a job when you're not in custody? Yes, I do have a job. Where do you work? Yeah. Where do you work? Oh, I work, um, I sell burritos sometimes. I don't know if you're a broker, if you're self-employed, they would not have withheld any taxes, but you have an obligation to still pay tax on yes. income. 
Oh, so you're under, uh, what, once you file your time, the court's going to order that's it. commencing as of January 1st, 2024. That's our argument in a nutshell. That, that, that sums it all up there, Del. <laughs> Mr. Ross paid child support 1452 uh, per month. Attorney time will continue as previously ordered, namely, mom will supervise for three days a week at Chuck E. Cheese's until such time as it is, uh, there's a date and an opportunity to have supervised printing time between dad and the minor child shallow with family counseling child services. Both each pay your own intake fee and then the authority should share equally these fees for the sessions. And you'll find we sent this for review in about six weeks. Hopefully we've got some reports from that agency, Ms. Hills. Your Honor, Mr. Walker's indicated that the wait list is currently about six to eight weeks. Okay, uh, so maybe eight weeks then. June 4th, Tuesday, June 4th yes. at two o'clock. I have a trial that day with Judge Arnold, Your Honor. Wednesday, June 5th at 830. I can do that. So if you could put that review date in the recommendation, Mr. Walker. Yes, Your Honor. Please. What time was that? 830, June 5th. Thank you. So, um, Ms. Bidal, do you have the phone number for this agency? You need to unmute yourself. No, Your Honor. Okay, do you have a piece of paper and a pen? Yes, I just have to get up. Ms. Hills, do you have the phone number off, uh, Mandy? I do. It's 734. Are you ready, Ms. Budell? 734-241-2000. Did you capture that, Ms. Budell? Yes, I have that. So please contact NG today. Get on the sooner you both you need to contact him today and make that uh, appointment for the intake to move this matter forward. All right, anything further this morning, Ms. Sills? No, Your Honor. Uh, Ms. Budell, anything further? No, Your Honor. Okay, so the. Uh, all right, the court will adopt the recommendation as revised to be mailed a copy. We'll see you back in June then. Thank you. April? All right. Well, yeah, well, that's, that's going to be for referee McKee. You're not going to be before this court. You're going to be before, before this court for review in June, review the parenting time. Uh, but the, okay, okay, Your Honor. The objection to the child court recommendation will be heard by referee McKee in person on April <clears throat> 30th at 1 p.m. We're having the 16th. Okay. Okay, uh, that will close, Mary. I'll zoom out. Okay, if you thought that was uh, annoying, which it was, that is nothing. This this right here is downright disturbing, but it's interesting. I feel like we should have we should do it. I haven't seen it, but I know the I know the fact pattern, and it's bad. Ms. Anderson, for the record, would you state your full name, please? Yes, I am Princess Kalifia Hatan Tupapé II, representing the entity Dejon Anderson. You're known as Dejon Anderson? I'm representing the entity as Dejon Anderson. And your date of birth? My date of birth is February 2nd, 1961. That would make you how old? That would make me 63 years old. And the last four digits, your social security number? I do not have a social security number. I have a declaration of nationality underneath the Washita Morris of the Indigenous People of the United Nations, Chapter 221593. What's your address? My address is. Do you have a 
your contact telephone number? Um, I don't know my contact number by heart. I believe it. Are you under the influence of any drugs, including alcohol today? No, I'm not. You read and understand the English language? Yes, I do. If I say something you don't understand, will you let me know? I will most definitely will. Sanderson. Officer Busick, who's investigated this, looked for you for the past two years. And Prosecutor Hunt have charged you with three count, counts of criminal conduct. Count one is murder as a felony. Would indicate that between April the 10th, 2022, and April the 16th, 2022, in Washington County, state of Indiana, you did knowingly or intentionally kill another human being, that being the child victim number one. Contrary to the form of the statute, such case it's made and provided by Indiana Code 35-42-1-1, parentheses one, and against the peace and dignity of the state of Indiana. I warned you. Count two, neglect of a dependent resulting in death as a level one felony would indicate between December the 1st, 2021 and April the 16th, 2022, in Washington County, state of Indiana, you being at, late, at least 18 years of age and having the care of child victim one, a dependent, less than 14 years of age, did knowingly place said dependent in a situation that endangered the dependent's life or health and which resulted in the death of child victim number one. Count three, obstruction of justice as a level six felony would indicate that between April the 10th, 2022 and April the 16th, 2022 in Washington County, state of Indiana, you did alter, damage, or remove a record, document, or thing with the intent to prevent said item from being produced or used as evidence in a legal proceeding or an administrative or criminal investigation, contrary to the form of the statutes made and such case provided. The murder, a felony, has a range of imprisonment from 45 years to 65 years with the advisory sentence being 55 years and up to a $10,000 fine. The level one felony neglect of a dependent resulting in death has a range of imprisonment from 20 years to 40 years with the advisory sentence being 30 years and up to a $10,000 fine. And the level six felony has a range of imprisonment of no time in jail for three of this misdemeanor to two and a half years at the Indiana Department of Corrections with the advisory sentence being one year and up to a $10,000 fine. Do you understand what you've been charged with? I do understand. Okay. And do you understand the potential penalties? I do. Do you intend to hire a lawyer or is someone likely to hire a lawyer for you? Uh, I want to file a motion for self-representation. You understand if you do that. Okay, so this puts me in mind of Daryl Brooks, and I got roped into it for the same reason that I did with Daryl Brooks, which is I had a I had a bunch of people ask me about it, <clears throat> and uh, it's it's horrific because of the crime, but it it is interesting, and I and I see how I get I get pulled into it because you got you got a soft sit trying to represent themselves in a capital case, and while that's ho just horrible. It is interesting. You are required to conduct yourself as a lawyer to be able to uh, board our uh, potential jurors, to abide by the rules of evidence, to abide by the rules of procedure. I do understand. I have a master's in history. That doesn't give you a law degree, though. But I do understand how to read procedures and understand right. the court procedures. All right. Just because... Uh, uh, no, you don't. Just because you represent yourself, that's, that doesn't make, doesn't ensure yourself of a good lawyer, you know. That's a personal opinion, but I understand. Make your, make your request in writing, okay? I will, most definitely. Uh, uh, Can you give me at least 
just like five days and I could get it I to you? I can certainly give you five days to do that. I think what my intention would be, let me ask you this. Can you afford a lawyer? Um, it's not that I can't afford a lawyer. It's that I want to do self-representation due to I understand the nature of my case. And I understand that this is my life on the line. And I, I do understand that there are things that involve my case as far as the evidence that I hold, which is Q classified evidence, which should be turned over to Judge Advocate General Courts immediately, if possible. Because my case involves other cases that are open currently with Judge Advocate General Courts, as well as federal investigations that are open. Well, if the Judge Advocate General uh, approaches us, we'll address it at that point in time. Okay. How about I appoint you standby counsel? Oh, no, thank you. No, thank you. All right. You make your written request. I need to advise you, you have a right to a speedy public trial by jury in this county. You have the right to face all witnesses against you, see your question and cross-examine those witnesses. You have the right to have witnesses brought into court to testify on your behalf. And it's your yeah, for, for anyone who doesn't know, Judge, Judge Advocate General, these are military courts. I, you know, she's charged here in a state court in Indiana. Um, you know, I don't know what she's on about, but I'm, I'm guessing it's insane. Your request, the court will issue subpoenas requiring those individuals to come into court to testify on your behalf and to bring evidence in. You have the right to have the state prove you guilty beyond a reasonable doubt. You have the right to remain silent. You cannot be required to give any testimony or make any statements against yourself to anyone. You do have the right to be heard in your own defense at any hearing or trial concerning the charges against you. Anything you say, however, may be used against you. Do you have any questions concerning your rights? No, I do not. Then okay. I will set this matter for a pretrial conference on the 25th day of April at 9 a.m. A trial date of the 6th day of August of this year at 8.30 a.m. and an omnibus date of June the 15th. Do you have any questions at all? No, I do not have any questions. Right. I don't know if it will be available. You sign this reappearance slip discuss the issue of bond. Ms. Hunt, what's the state's position? Yes, Your Honor. Um, given the gravity of this case, uh, first of all, I would like for you just to take judicial notice of the probable cause affidavit that the state filed in support of these three charges, as, uh, which resulted in the arrest warrant. I'd also like to bring to the judge's attention that it's almost a two-year mark of officers locating um, this at the time un un unidentified little boy in the woods um, so I would argue that the defendant has been a fugitive since that time has uh, her, her identification has been made um, I think that raises any bond in a murder case to be something uh, of the utmost importance and should be of an amount no. that should be very Wouldn't. difficult if not impractical for her to to be able to afford I, or I feel she will be uh, abscond from this this court She's never been from Indiana. She's not from Washington County, is my understanding. She was located in, in California. So on that reserve, I would leave that to the court. Uh, and if further motion is needed on the state's behalf, I will make that. Thank you, Ms. Um, Ms. Anderson, yes. you just made an objection. Yes. State the basis of your objection. The basis of my objection is the fact that I am not a fugitive. I have been under NSA surveillance for the past eight months. And how can that qualify me as a fugitive on the run when I've also had a detail from Space Force that was following my every move? When I contacted right. the Indiana State well, to arrest me. Let me tell you, me. that is not a valid legal objection. If you want to represent yourself, you're going to have to learn the rules of evidence and the rules of procedure because if you conduct yourself like this and make these types of objections, you have no chance in the world. Baby. Okay. So, objection overruled. That I will let you make argument in regards to bond. Okay. Well, thank you. So, that's my, my argument is that I have been under surveillance by NSA for over eight months. I also have a detail that follows me everywhere I go from Space Force Military. 
as in to, I also contacted Indiana State. I think it was a federal marshal that I called to have my location tracked to pick me up. So there's no type of extent of me running where I need this extra. Some people call me the space cowboy. On, on my charges. Well, that's sort of interesting because it's my understanding Officer Busick has been in touch with almost every one of those agencies and they haven't been able to identify your location until recently. So I'm going to set your bond at no bond at this particular point in that point in time that if Space Force comes forward and tells me that they're uh, willing to monitor you, uh, we'll take up the issue of bond at a later time. Okay. Anything else? No, Your Honor. All right, we'll be off record at 144. You can, she's remanded to the custody of the Washington County Sheriff's Department. Yes, thank you, Judge. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Oh, Sam, let me see if I can give you the right one. All right, everyone's already asking. I'm reading your comments. Everyone's asking about it. I, I'll I'll do the trial if I have a link to the trial. I, I mean, I don't know. This isn't the court. I, I can't even remember where I got this from. Marion sent it to me. I, I don't I, I don't know if that's going to be available. So if you guys help me out, I'll do it. Yeah, those are those. Mm -hmm. One second. She does, but she'll pass. Go back on. All right. Based on what I've just heard, I'm going to ask someone from the public defender office to be assigned to represent Ms. Anderson. Uh, if she files a, a written request and demonstrates that she has the ability uh, to understand and comprehend um, and represent herself, I mean, ask them to withdraw or require their, no longer require their services, but uh, I think it's appropriate that someone from the public defender office be assigned at this so. particular point in time. If private hat counsel is hired, they can withdraw. We'll be, now we'll be off record. Thank you. He, he appears to be a, a very reasonable, no nonsense judge. I, I don't know that, I don't know that he'd be the trial judge. And I don't know if it's going to stay in this courtroom. I have no idea. I don't even know what county we're in. Thank you. Well, there you go. My, my chat would somehow know. Yeah, that was ugly. Lord. This, it's this, already started. This has it's some so nuggets in it. It started just. I know. The pledge is all yours. into it with his deputy, okay. as usual. All right. Go to raise your right hand for me. Tell me, swear or affirm you will truthfully and accurately interpret the conversation court in the defense today? I do. All right, sir. All right. Is this Mr. Fausto? Is this the Senor Castro? Yes. He's a political charge of violation of probation that was originally a driving under the influence and a no valid driver's license. Está aquí por incumplimiento de libertad vigilada. Originalmente se le acusó de manejar bajo los efectos del alcohol y no tener licencia de conducir válida. His bond has been set at five thousand. His court date is May the first at one thirty. Se le ha fijado la fianza en cinco mil dólares. Su próxima audiencia el primero de mayo a la una treinta. Good luck, sir. Buena suerte, señor. Uh, is this Mr. Murillo Hernandez? Este es el señor Murillo Hernandez. Señor. 
Yes, sir. He's for an out of county warrant out of Osceola County for violation of probation. Está detenido bajo una orden de arresto del condado Oceola por uh, una orden de arresto. His Osceola County judge has ordered him held without bond. El juez del condado Oceola suyo ha pedido que se le mantenga detenido sin fianza. We're going to honor that request. Vamos a cumplir con esa petición. Ask the Bay County Sheriff's Office to contact Osceola County and get him back down there so he can get this behind him as quickly as possible. Le vamos a pedir a la oficina de Alguaciles del Condado Bay que se comunique con el Condado Oceola para que lo recojan y pueda terminar esto lo más pronto posible. Oh, oh, right. His return date, deputy, is going to be April the Can you repeat that one more time, Your Honor, please? His, his return date before county judge here in Bay County, if he has not already been transported, will be April 19th. Si no se le ha transportado para el 19 de abril, comparecerá frente a un juez aquí de nuevo en el Condado Bay. Buena suerte. Next. I think that's all you got, Your Honor. Thank you, sir. Your Honor. Thank you, sir. Next. Next. I don't have to yell, Weldon. Step on the X. Oh boy, I'm missing. Step you. on the X. Here. Say your name. Julie and then Brian. Brian, we're charged with domestic violence with battery. Do you understand the charge? I. What do you think? You understand what you're charged with? That's all. That's all I asked. I didn't ask if you agreed with it. I just asked if you. Understood. You've been given copies of paperwork and advised of your rights. Is that true? Yes. All right, ma'am. Based on your application, if you do qualify, I'm going to go ahead and appoint the public defender to represent you. Any question about that? No, sir. Deputy, criminal history? I have on um, um, felony probation. Leave it a same death. You have a case number, ma'am? 99. 338 CF. Mm. All right. All right, ma'am. Be trial release for another domestic. Well, yes, with you actually. Yeah. We'll, we'll leave it be. I think yeah. the violation of probation will probably take care of everything. In case 99 338, I'm going to sign a warrant for violation of probation on the new domestic violence battery bond 5,000. It's going to be. April 3rd at 8.30, no contact indirectly or through a third-party alleged victim. Good luck, ma'am. Step to your right, to the T. State your name, ma'am. Adriana Mata. Ms. Mata, this is for the court charge of domestic violence battery. Do you understand that charge, ma'am? Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. And you've been given copies of paperwork and advised of your rights. Is that true, ma'am? Yes, sir. Based on your application, you indicate you're going to hire your own attorney or represent yourself. Is that how you proceed? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay. Yeah, the history. No history. All right. Free trial release. Court date is tomorrow, April 3rd at 8.30. Report to the pre-trial release court tomorrow. Yes, sir. All right. No Step contact. behind to the signature. Just through a third party. Let's go. Next. Wait, next man, say your name. I'm going to face the TV. Sean, you're for the court charge of petty theft. Do you understand that charge? No, I haven't been informed of a charge as of until today, just to sir. I 
Um, no, the information on this affidavit is not accurate. I do not reside in the state of Florida, and I have not been informed of a reason on why I am here. For petty theft. What is the, um, what is the, what is allegedly has been stolen? Removing I, a I, I'm at, I'm at, vehicle I'm and taking it to you. I'm sorry. Removing the decal sticker from a victim's vehicle and taking it with you. I've done no such thing, sir. And the officer, before unlawfully detaining me, I allowed him myself okay. and my belongings, and he found no such thing. What was the bond, sir? I would like to argue. Thank you. I did, I did, so I'm doing okay. it. Okay. All right, you can I'm sorry, sir. I didn't hear you. You don't need to. Good luck. All right. Come on out, ma'am. I'm sorry. Are come you threatening me, sir? What's your name? Excuse me. I have a right to get his name. What's your name? Stephon Allen. Okay. Name Van. Yeah. Make sure see what you do. Okay. Well, what I asked you when I was muted is do you think she's a sovereign citizen? Judge addresses it right here. Do you think she's a sovereign citizen? Okay. What I asked you when I was muted is do you think she's a sovereign citizen? Judge addresses it right here. But I do love it when she said, I'm sorry I didn't hear you. And he said, that's all right. You don't need to. See, see what you did? Not today, boss. That's no. 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 I'm not coming back down here no more. <laughs> Step on the X, ma'am, and state your name. She should know me. She saw me in court. Face to face. Well, give her the kudo for coming to court. Okay. Thank you. All right. Come, Ms. Lewis. I'm okay. I'm bailing. Ms. Lewis, you're fully court charge of possession of crack cocaine. You understand that charge? Yeah, I understand the charge. I understand you've been. All right, Granny. Give me copies of paperwork and advise of your rights. That's true, ma'am? Yes. Based on your application, I find that you do qualify for the service of the public. I'm going to go ahead and appoint the public defender to represent you. Any questions about that? <laughs> I'm going to take that. Hold on. No. <laughs> yeah. I thought she was sovereign last time I saw her, but she's not sovereign. No. She, yeah, there's just something. Not sovereign, just like that. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. <laughs> okay. uh, diseases right. are in the same category. Right. This does qualify for the offender. I'm a pointer offender deputy criminal history. Um, nothing says the 90s. Like 97. What's called pre-trial release. You need to be at the pre-trial release <laughs> office before nine o'clock tomorrow. Your court date's gonna be April the 25th at nine o'clock. Good luck, ma'am. April the 25th at nine. You're gonna get copies of it. Step over there next to him. Next. Okay. Well, Dick Stevenson has issued a warrant holding you without bond. Your court date is April 25th at nine o'clock. Get it together, woman. You're crying like chili in here. Nine o'clock. Oh God, I, um, there's no bonds to say like that at all. Yeah. <laughs> Who's talking to you? Yes, ma'am. Um, yeah. Step to your right to the T. <laughs> <laughs> Red X, ma'am. State your name. On Buckmaster. Buckmaster, you're fully court charter. Passing counterfeit instruments. You understand? Steady theft. You understand the charges? You understand what you're charged with? Yeah, I understand you've been giving copies of paper. Not really? No? I said yes. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Ma'am, I understand you've been giving copies of paperwork and advice of your rights. That's true? Yes, sir. Yes. Based on your application, on you do qualify, I'm going to go ahead and appoint the public defender to represent you. So you have an attorney now. Any questions about that? <laughs> he gave you an attorney. Okay. He's cutting it out too much. No history. No, no history. 
Pre-trial release. No Your contact, Honor. No defendant. We're victims. Your Honor, can you hear me? Yeah. Um, reading the the uh, probable cause narrative, she can't be charged with um, counterfeit because they're clearly marked, copied, not legal tender. They can charge her with a bunch of other stuff. They can charge her with a theft. They can charge her with a fraud, but they can't charge her with the uh, right. the counterfeit. Win the battle or lose the war. I'm pre trial releasing out. her. Yes, sir. I mean, I can hold her for 24 hours to cure, but we don't want to do that, do we? No, we don't. On that particular charge. Well, I mean, okay, and pre-trial release or petty theft, but pre-trial release with a felony court date. Right. Yes, ma'am. State your name. Ms. Chair, you're for the court charged violation of probation for friendly battery by detainee. Do you understand the charge? Yes, sir. All right, ma'am, based on your application, if you do qualify, I'm going to go ahead and appoint the public defender representative. So you have an attorney now. Any question about that? No. Good register in his infinite wisdom is where you have that bond. Your court date is May 15th at 9 o'clock. Good luck, ma'am. Step to your right to the T. When the green light comes on, sign. Next. Red X, ma'am. State your name. Ms. Jennings, you're fully court on an out of state warrant. It's a BOP. You've been ordered held without bond for Washington County. We're going to honor that request, hold you without bond, and ask the Bay County Sheriff's Office to get you back to Chipley as quickly as possible. Return date is May, I'm sorry, April 19th. Ms. Van Broek can walk back up there by then. She loves I don't know why you be trying to make me work and exercise. Next. Ms. Bambro, we all need a little extra. Don't we? State your name, sir. Andrew Martin Warner, Junior, sir. Mr. Warner, you're from the court, try to spell the paper. They can't be public in front of Judge Grammar. You understand why you. Yes, I understand one of you. I just have one thing that I could say. I've been in custody since the 27th of February, sir. I was wondering if there's possible to get time served and maybe well, turn into civil judgment. Well, it's going to be it's going to turn into a civil judgment, but you're going to have to do two days credit for zero starting today. I can't get no credit for the days. I've Are you getting out in the next two days? Uh, I got Jerry Steele's trying to find me. So I'm trying to find out. Now, I can't find out until I get this done. He wanted me to see if I can get it squashed. So I can find He can squash. Step to your right to the tip. Next. Red X, sir. Face the TV. State your name. Mr. Manny Warren. Suarez, you're for the court charge domestic violence battery, resisting officer with violence. In a violation of probation for criminal omission, domestic violence battery, and resisting officer without violence. Do you understand those charges? No, sir. What don't you understand? Um, so I without wasn't here on these charges at the time. Um, that's what I don't understand is how I caught these charges. I was on a VOP violation. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm kind of confused. Um, but the other um, you didn't say the cat jumped on his wiener, did you? Standish, who is the no contact order out on? I guess the domestic violence, the domestic violence. <laughs> Robert Clark was who you were originally not supposed to have contact with. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay. On the domestic violence battery, bonds 2,500. Okay. Now we're resisting all without violence, 2,500. Your court date's going to be April the 3rd, 8.30 on those cases. On the VOP, you're held without bond. Your court date is April the 17th at 1.30. April 17th at 1.30. Step right here, sir. Red X, sir, state your name. 
Mr. Brown, you're fully court charge driving under the influence. You understand the charge? Yes, sir. I understand you've been given copies of paperwork and advised of your rights. Is that true? Yes, sir. Based on your application, finally, you do qualify. I'm going to go ahead and appoint the public defender representing you. Any question about that? No, sir. Deputy criminal history? 22 controlled substance times two, paraphernalia, child neglect without harm, 21 DUI, uh, 18 domestic, 15 DUI, 14 domestic. Okay. I'll set it 2000. No, no alcohol. Court date's going to be April 3rd at 830. Good luck. What was the bond, sir? 10,000. Thank you. Next. Red X, state your name, place the TV. Michael McKay. This is Mr. McKay. Yes, sir. Where have you been for the last three years, sir? Um, all over the place, homeless for a majority of the time of it. And uh, just recently, uh, got a roof over my head and kind of settled. Okay, well. On all these cases that you failed to appear, what the jail cell? To follow through with pretrial release, I'm going to hold you without bond. Your court date's going to be May 9th at 8 30. Step to your right to the T. Next. Red X, sir. State your name. State your name. Tell the judge your name. Gordon Keith Finch. Mr. Finch, you're for the court. Charge of driving license, suspended, revoked. You understand the charge? Yes, sir. I understand you've been giving copies of paperwork and advising your rights. That's true. Uh, yes, sir. Based on your application, I you do qualify. I'm going to go ahead and appoint the public defender represent you. Any question about that? No, sir. Yep, you come on, Esther. I got him on a pressure yeah. release for a grand theft. Got a case number now. All right, Mr. Finch, on the driving license suspended revoke, bond's 1500. Court date's going to be April 3rd at 8.30. I'm revoking release at 23.4504. Good luck, sir. All right, step to your right to the T. State your name, sir. Okita Nelson. Yeah. Possession marijuana within a thousand feet of a school daycare call center. You understand the charges? Yes, sir. You're also for aggravated assault death weapon. I understand you've been given copies of paperwork and advised of your rights. Is that true? <laughs> Got a copy of your paperwork? Yes. Were you advised of your rights today? But the the, the assault is oh, hold on. Were you advised of your rights today? Yes. Okay. Now, can I say something? Don't don't talk about the facts of your case. Okay. Yes. Everything we're everything we're doing today is being recorded. I'm based on your application. I find that you do qualify for a public defender. I'm giving you a public defender. That public defender is going to tell you not to talk about the facts of your case. Okay. Thank you, sir. All right. Deputy criminal history. No history, sir. I have one thing to say before I go. Okay, hurry. Before all of this happened, I was trying to find a female so I can get my kids to stay with them so I can go in the U.S. Army or the U.S. Air Force. That is my aim for staying in the United States of America. And that is my plan. And it will never change. I'm a great father. Well, it's going to change now if you get a firearm. I didn't see this part. He got... He goes full bar at. I was I was looking for a female to take care of my kids so I could join the army and become part of. The... <laughs> uh, 
I mean, I'm sure it's honest, but he, he just doesn't realize how horrible it sounds. Charge. <sighs> On the possession marijuana. Ladies, do we have any volunteers? Within a thousand feet of school, bond set at 5,000. <laughs> On the aggravated assault with a firearm. Bond set at 15,000. No contact directly. In yeah, so Judge, I am I am here illegally, but um, I just have to I just have to kidnap a woman and enslave her to take care of my children, so that I can join the military and then become legal. So it's a process. We're gonna have to <laughs> we're gonna have to break some eggs to make this omelet, but I have a plan. Directly through a third party alleged victim. <laughs> no firearms. Court date's gonna be May sixteenth at nine o'clock. Good luck, sir. Next. Red X. There you go. Face the TV. State your name. <laughs> he does have a plan. Aggravated assault with a deadly weapon, resisting officer without violence, simple assault on a fire on an officer, firefighter, or EMT is never simple. And criminal mischief. Do you understand the charges? Yes, sir. I I understand you've been giving copies of paperwork and advise of your rights. Is that true, sir? Yes. All right. Based on your application, I find that you do qualify. I'm going to go ahead and appoint the public defender representative. Any question about that? No, sir. Deputy, criminal history? No history. What do you want to talk about? Indeed, but the word's getting out. It's, it's not the deal it was you know, 20, 30 years ago, him? even. Who is Sierra to him? Most, most of the world is catching on. All right. Mr. Nichols on the aggravated assault with a deadly weapon, the machete. Bond is set at 15,000. On the obstruction without, or resisting without, bond's 2,500. The assault is 2,500. And the criminal mischief is 5,000. No contact directly, indirectly through a third party alleged victim. Mr. Hunter, if your office thinks that he needs evaluation, I'll sign a order for evaluation. I'll let them know, Your Honor. Thank you. Court date. I'm sorry. April 5th at Tax day. Great. <laughs> Station name, sir. Mr. Jones, you're for the court charge of indecent, lewd, or lascivious behavior. Do you understand the charge? Yes, sir. I, I was just going to give a ride. She had flag me down. Okay. I a I said, I got sir, a please, please stop talking. Yeah. Please stop talking. That's the public defender trying to advise just remain silent. Sorry about that. No, you're good. All right. Mr. Jones, I understand you've been given copies of paperwork, advised of your rights, based on your application, I find that you do qualify. I'm going to go ahead and appoint the public defender to represent you. Deputy Criminal History. 23 Ag Assault, 20 Ag Assault, cocaine possession, 19 DUI. 13, sex offense, victim 12 to 15, contributing to the delinquency of a minor. And older 12, domestic, felony back, kidnap, false imprisonment, and less than 20. Goes back to 97 locally. Bonds 250,000, no contact with alleged victim or anyone under the age of 18. Court date's going to be May 6th at 9 o'clock. Step to your right to the T. Next. Red X, sir. Stay, you got a bond of 250. State your name. Robert South. Mr. South, you fully court charted possession of prescription drug without a script, fentanyl. I'm sorry, possession of methamphetamine, possession of fentanyl without a script, and possession of paraphernalia. Do you understand the charges? Yes, sir. I understand you've been giving copies of paperwork and advised of your rights. Is that true? Yes, sir. Based on your application, I find you do qualify. I'm going to go ahead and appoint the public defender to represent you. Any questions about that? No, sir. Have you heard 
He just bonded on two felony case numbers for dealing in stolen burglary and a petty theft. That's your total. 250, Is he complaining about $250? No, he's not. He was just making sure what the actual bond was. Because I can make it hard. You have case numbers, ma'am? 24, both. 921 and 922 CF. Mr. South, when something goes bad, do you really kind of cringe every time somebody says it's going south? Yes, sir, I do. I do too. I do too. Because, I mean, I just don't like it. I, my family started saying things go north when they go bad. <laughs> For you, however, things may have gone south. They did. All right, buddy. On the possession of meth, bond is five thousand. The possession of fentanyl is ten thousand. Possession of paraphernalia is a thousand. Your court date's going to be May sixteenth at nine o'clock, and I'm revoking release on nine twenty one and nine twenty two. Step to your right to the T. Next, Red X, sir. State your name. Ken, how you doing? Oh my goodness. Mr. Hayes, before the court charge a burglar of a drug of a dwelling or structure. Okay, good. Not armed. I don't know why it says armed on that. Uh oh. Unless they're calling the, surely they're not calling the nail gun a weapon. No, no, we're not going to do that, Ralph. We're going to, it's burg of a dwelling or structure while unarmed and resisting officer without violence. You understand those charges, sir? Yes, sir. I understand you've been given copies of paperwork and advised of your rights. Is that true, sir? Yes, sir. All right, based on your application, I find that you do qualify for the service of the public defender's office. I'm going to go ahead and appoint the public defender to represent you. Any question about that? No, sir. Deputy criminal history. 22, resisting false ID, uh, FTA on a felony, VOP in 23. 20, assault on a firefighter, EMT, resisting 19, DWLSR. 18, out of Utah, controlled substance, resisting, tampering with um, records. Found set at 15,000 on the burglary. 2,500 on the resisting, court date's gonna be April the 15th at nine o'clock, no contact directly, indirectly, or through a third party alleged victim. Good luck, sir. 15,000, you said? 17.5 yes. total. 17.5 total. From the X, here you go. State your name. Kylan Ash. Mr. Ash, before the court charge of obstruction of justice, tampering with a witness specifically, disorderly conduct, and domestic violence battery. Do you understand those charges? Uh, I, I don't understand the tampering with witness. Yeah, that's that really kind of bites right now because that's the felony. Let's see what they allege that you did. Hmm. Oh, it's like removing Awkward. means of trans of communication from someone. So it's that. It's that cell phone statute, allegedly. All right, buddy. I understand you've been giving copies of paperwork and advised of your rights. Is that true? Yes, sir. Based on your application, finally, you do qualify. I'm going to go ahead and appoint the public defender represent you. So you have an attorney now. Any question about that, sir? Can you say that one more time? You've got an attorney yeah. now. Deputy criminal history, Mr. Ash. Side of Virginia, you have a rape times two and twenty-three, an abduction of a person with intent yeah. to defile. Yeah, can I? Um, can I? Is it possible if I can be uh tested for alcohol and drugs? I think I was a uh, drug. You roofied. Uh, what, what does that mean? You yeah, asking? Yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Let the nurse know to speak drugs. 
No, no I'm right. talking about the the actions that took place in the apartment. I think I was uh, I think I was drugged. Okay. Well, I mean, you know if you drank alcohol or not, right? No, I I uh, I wouldn't know. I would. Yeah, um, without getting into further detail, there were drugs involved that people were uh, giving to me that uh, ended up being glue. Like, I smoked some glue and stuff. I thought I was smoking crack. Did you drink alcohol? I, I wouldn't know. I didn't. I, it, I don't drink. I don't smoke. I, and so I just, I'm pretty sure I, something had happened to me. I think I was drugged. Okay. He's clearly the victim. Of witness. Well, I think we can all agree on this much. The disorderly conduct is 2,500. The battery is 2,500. No contact with the alleged victim. Court date's going to be. Those prior rape convictions were also a big misunderstanding. May 6th at 9 o'clock. Good luck, sir. Next. Red X, sir. Red X. This one, right? Mm -hmm. State your name, sir. San Antonio Parker. Mr. Parker, you pull the court charges. Possession of ammo by a convicted felon. Over 20 grams of marijuana. And possession of firearm by a convicted felon. You understand those charges, sir? Yes, sir. With nine counts of possession of ammunition by a convicted felon. Nine. Have you ever had any history of substance abuse issues? <laughs> I smoked a lot of weed. <laughs> you were right. I don't really. That's what the statute was envisioned to contemplate. But here we are. Uh, all right. He's, has he got a hold from out of state already? Yes, sir. So it's not going to matter what I do. All right. Here's the deal, Mr. Parker. You've got an out of state warrant. You don't have to take care of your little chart before you take care of the out of state warrant. So it's not going to really matter a whole lot. Even if I ROR'd you, they're not going to let you go. You understand that, right? If, if you do, I, I'll, I'll be able to handle the extradition well, quick. Well, I would. Okay. <laughs> no problem. No problem. So yeah, I, I, no I guess problem. I could. But, but no, I'm just point. saying I'll be able to handle the ex, extra, right. extradition. Yeah. On the nine counts of possession of ammunition by a convicted felon, I'm going to put a deposit bond of $10,000. <clears throat> on the paraphernalia, thousand dollars. The marijuana is five thousand. The possession of a firearm by a convicted felon is ten thousand. Court date's going to be April the twenty fifth at nine o'clock. Good luck, sir. He did not apply for the offender. He, did, he said he was going to hire his own. Next. Red Xer, face the TV, state your name. Uh, Daniel Miller. Mr. Miller, you're for the court charged with felony DWSR. Do you understand that charge? Uh, sir, uh, driving with suspended license, you say? Yeah, they, they've made it a felony now. I didn't know that. <laughs> well, they, you keep, it's not because, it's not, it's not really new, it's because you keep getting them, allegedly. <laughs> Based on your application, I find you do qualify. He's trying to make a notice argument like, hey, hey, I didn't know my conduct was a felony. If I would have known it was a felony, I wouldn't have done it. Uh, it doesn't work like that. I'm going to go ahead and appoint the public defender represent you. So you have an attorney now. Any question about that? Thank you. Nothing since 17, and that was a loitering and prowling. Bond said 5,000. Court date's going to be April 15th, 9 o'clock. Good luck, sir. I'll thank you. Step to your right to the T. Next. Get up. Okay. Red X, sir. Step on the X. Face the TV. 
Say your name. My name is Claudia Tori. Mr. Tori, for the court charge of possession of THC oil and disorderly conduct. Do you understand the charges? Yes. That done. All right, Mr. Tory. I understand you've been given copies of paperwork and advised of your rights. Is that true? Yes. Based on your application, I find that you do qualify for the service of the public defender's office. I'm going to go ahead and appoint the public defender to represent you. Any question about that? Uh, no, sir. All right. Deputy, come on, history. No history, sir. Good. We talk now. Please have we were here. Um, so I'm hoping that I could, you know, take him home and bring him, you know, sign something and bring him back for court. Um, but um, he's here with me, so I'm stuck here. So I, you know, straighten this out. Well, he's, he's going to have to be here. He's going to have to be here in the building tomorrow morning at nine o'clock to sign up for the pre-trial release building. So once he does pre-trial release, then he can. Talk to them about him. Mean, he can leave and stuff like that. But releasing them pre-trial release, the process. He's got to sign up in person in the morning on the first floor, and then, yeah, and that way they'll get him signed up for the program. His court date's going to be May sixth at nine o'clock. Now, the T. Okay, good. Because I saw that he's got a New Jersey. Okay, good, 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 good. good. Okay, because I was worried. I was worried about him coming back in May, but. All right, May 6th at 9 o'clock, pre-trial release with random UAs. Not step to your right, to the T. Next, when that yeah. green light comes on, you'll sign. State your name, sir. Tell you who to call, and they can call you when he's ready to be picked up. Okay, all right. Is this Mr. Hatfield? Yes, sir. But not a McCoy, huh? No, that's not, that's right. All right, Mr. Hatfield, you're for the court charging violation of probation for domestic violence battery in front of Judge Grammer and failing to appear for a felony criminal mischief charge. You understand those charges, sir? Uh, not really. So uh, on the felony mischief, I was I bonded out and then I checked into probation on the 13th of March and they didn't say anything to me about it. And then they came up to me yesterday and arrested me. As for the failure to appear, I was already in the state's hands in jail. And told them that I had court at 1 30. So I'm a little confused on definitely the KPS, but as far as you know, the VOP, I had already bonded out. I had already had a couple interactions with police officers as far as questioning uh, for different cases, and then showed up for my probation uh, check in at the 13th of March. And it says here that the warrant was issued on the 4th. So yep. I'm definitely, definitely confused. Me too. Here we are. The wheels of justice sometimes turn slowly. Right. Yeah, I, I hear you. Um, is there, I Me mean, too. for the KPS, I definitely shouldn't be charged with that as I'm already in state hands. But as, um, you know, I've, as I've already been doing what I was supposed to for my probation, I would love to have an ROR to so a $5,000 bond as I've already paid a bond for the criminal mischief. Well, when, wait, when were you supposed to be in court in front of Judge Gay? Uh, one o'clock yesterday. yesterday. Yes, sir. And you were getting picked up your VOP warrant, huh, sir? Yeah, you're get you're getting picked up on your VOP warrant, and so you were being processed in on your VOP warrant when you missed court. Yes, sir. Oh, uh, that's brutal. <laughs> Is it? I said that was my luck, and the front desk said, "No, they'll know where you're at. You're not going to get a cake, yes, And here we are. Here we are. I cannot remove Judge Gay's KPS, but I think your um mm. that's brutal. As far as I was, I was where I was supposed to be. I even told the police officer I was getting arrested. I said I have court. Let me go to the courthouse. He said no. I got to take you to the jail. I told the front desk five different times. I had court. I had court. I needed to be at the courtroom. They told me, oh, we'll, we'll know where you're going to be at. Who is, who's, who's doing Judge Gay's stuff? What, who's, who's the clerk? Who's, who's Sean's? 
Yeah, let Joanne know and see if Judge Gay will reinstate. Get an attorney. You can all this can be straightened out. All right, listen to me. I'm going to let yes, the clerk know what was the situation was. Yes, so Judge Gay, Judge Gay may be inclined to reinstate your original bond that you'd already posted. I can't make any promises. Okay. Okay. But I can. I can. I'm, I'm telling you. I'm letting the clerk know, and the clerk will contact the judge. All right. All right. All so. Right. The As bond for Judge Grammer is five thousand. Your court date is going to be April the seventeenth at one thirty. Right now, you're held without bond on Judge Gay's case. That may change. I'm just telling you. I'll go talk to the clerk also when we're finished here. But your court date is going to be May sixth at nine o'clock. All right. And so again, there's no way because I did what I was supposed to as far as checking into probation after this warrant was already issued. I wasn't told anything about it. I mean, there's no way I could get it. Issued. The warrant doesn't mean the warrant's not valid. Okay, fair enough. Thank you, sir. Set to your right, to the tip. Next. In this case, the wheels of justice wobble slightly, too. Yeah, that's that's odd. Say your name. Jeffrey Garner. Mr. Garner, you're for the court. Thank you. All right. Mr. Garner, you're for the court. Charge of violation of probation for what was originally possession of controlled substance of fleeting and looting in front of Judge Gay. You understand those charges? Yes, sir. Um, but that then that violation was supposed to be ran concurrent with the uh, prison sentence I just finished up yesterday. Well, I don't know why they're doing. Why has he got? It? They're trying to give me two court dates. No, those are both felony. They're all felony cases. This is the third time in two weeks that I've run across cases that we're supposed to have multiple case numbers resolving a case and at least one was left off well this is a little bit different because it's got I mean, he's got a, he's got a plea hearing set up in the morning in front of judge gay violation. and the violation is set up for a different date but obviously they can take care of it tomorrow so on the on the two charges your order held out bond Court date's going to be tomorrow morning, April 3rd at 8 30. Make sure they know all your cases that are pending, okay? Yes, sir. All right. Step to you, right. Next. Right next, sir. State your name. Cassine Weeks. Mr. Weeks, before the court, charge of violation of probation for domestic violence battery by strangulation times two. You understand those charges? Yes. Sir, Judge Clark is where you held up on. Your court date is May the 22nd at 9 o'clock. Good luck, sir. Okay. Step to your right. Red X, state your name. Tibbetts, Robert. Mr. Tibbetts, before the court, charge a Jackson County warrant for child support. You got a purge in the amount of. Is that right, the right number? $1,555.59. Yes, sir. Can you make that? Um, it would be the eighth. Hopefully, we'll get you back up there by then. Um, okay, we're going to hold you until you purge out. You still got the purge available to you, okay? Yes, sir. I just did 90 days in Calhoun. This was a running concurrent by any chance for, oh, for child support. Sir, mm -mm. return dates April 19th. If you haven't already been sent, thank you. Except to you, right? Next, <laughs> say your name, sir. Do you hear my Davis? Mr. Davis, you're for the court on an out of, out of county warrant out of Duval. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Violation. A possession of firearm by convicted felon in violation of injunction. You understand the charges? Yes, sir. 
have been ordered held up on Duval County authorities have requested the honor of your presence. I'm going to hold you for Duval County, ask the Bay County Sheriff's Office to get you back over there to Jacksonville. Court date return is going to be April 19th if you haven't already been transported. Good luck, sir. Step to your right to the T. Next. Red X, sir. Face the TV. State your name. Mr. Ellis, you're for the court charge of possession of THC concentrate. You understand the charge? Yes, ma'am. I mean, yes, sir. Um, do I got okay. the um, the witness? Okay. All right. I understand you've been given copies of paperwork and advised of your rights. That's true. Yes, sir. Based on the application, I find that you do qualify. I'm going to go ahead and appoint the public defender to represent you. So you have an attorney now. Any questions about that? No, sir. Yeah, you come history. No history. What brings you down here from Georgia? I was on spring break, sir. Where you go to school? Uh, I graduated last year from West County High School. So where are you in school? Oh, I don't, I don't go to um, college. Then you're I got my spring. own. Sir? You're on vacation. You're not on spring break. Spring break, you yes, got out of school. But yes, sir, you said that. It's just a vacation now, bro. Yes, 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 sir. It's a vacation. Yes, sir. All right. I'm going to release you on pre-trial release. You need to report to the pre-trial release office before 9 o'clock tomorrow. Then you'll be able to come and go, but your court date's going to be April the 15th at 9 o'clock. Yes, sir. All right, step to your right. That's a wrap. <clears throat> it's just a vacation now, brah. <laughs> Van was on fire. He usually is. He usually is. He was cracking me up when he kept saying it to that guy. Yeah, that's brutal, man. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know what to do. But as funny as that was, in the end, he did try to help him. He did try to help him. The, the guy actually made the guy actually made a decent argument for himself under the circumstances, which is rare, but he did. He'll, he'll weasel out of there eventually. All right, I have no idea. That that's what happens sometimes. Thanks for everyone who contributed and helped me there. Big big thanks to people in court, which sent me. She sent me all of Judge Van and and the crazy Karen in court. I was cursing her for it to start with because that thing started slow i thought that this this is like a routine hearing where nothing's going on and then karen warmed up and it it, it it just it just got better and by better i mean worse all right thank you all for coming out i appreciate it i'll see you all soon